Yo! Wagwan, welcome back. So, we got another video from Eight at the Table. Today's topic is gonna be why men get friend zone. We all know the dreaded friend zone. We all know what the gulag is like. I've been there, and I'm sure you've been there too. So, when it comes to the friend zone, we gotta get more specific and we gotta get more details. Why do guys get into the friend zone? Whose fault is it? How do you get out of the friend zone? All these questions will be answered on the upcoming episode of Dragon Ball. No, I'm just kidding. Why men get friend zone? Let's get right into the video. All right. Relationship, you have to be a friend. The main, the main ingredients outside of sex in a relationship is a fucking friend. Is a person who listens to you. But if you're someone who's perhaps a little bit more laid back, maybe a little bit you know, who doesn't necessarily like assertive men or aggressive men, you're gonna appreciate the friend approach. And I can actually appreciate that. You did say that you were put in the friend zone. And when you're orbiting for five years, that's not you being put in the friend zone. You place yourself in the friend zone. My personal opinion is that women string I can, I can see that front guys sure. in the I friend zone that. along as a bailout option or the emergency dick plan. Because I believe in like a man, if a man wants you, he will show you that he wants you. I wholeheartedly sure. believe, no, no. Like uh, affirmatively, assertively, uh, oftentimes aggressively, but like you will have no doubt that that man wants you. So uh, on that end, I totally agree with you. But I also can appreciate the time that a man puts in to get to know you, to get to know your mama and them, to understand everything about you and understand you on the friend side so that when he is, you know, in a place to, to step to you, he's no longer insecure. He's no longer scared. He's 100% sure of what he wants to do. So then when he steps to you, you're, you, you already his. It ain't no, well, maybe, you know, he already knows in his mind when he steps to you that, that, that you're gonna be like, damn, yes, you know, I, I ain't like you at first, but damn, you've been, you been a real one. And yeah. it kind of makes you cute. You know what I'm saying? So hold on. But I think, I, I think that it just depends on how you're, on, on what you like as a person. Do you want a man who who friend zones himself? Because they they you you essentially friend zone yourself, right? I was already put in there, right? So, yeah, I was, but, some, yeah, but the thing is that some some <laughs> women Yo, like assertive men. So if you want someone who is assertive, you gonna go at you you're not gonna necessarily feel Oliver's um, approach. You know what I mean? But if you but if you're someone who's perhaps a little bit more laid back, maybe a little bit you know, who doesn't necessarily like assertive men or aggressive men, you're gonna appreciate the friend approach. And I can actually appreciate that. Like, I haven't really dated that many men who were not my friends, to be very honest. Like, I, I don't really like strange men. Like, you gotta have some kind of connection to me. Like, you're like one of my best friend's friends, or, you know, you've been around. Like, I somehow have to know you, but I actually never like strange men. For the most part, I probably always talk to somebody who was semi in my circle or friend or I had yeah. some relationship with beforehand. But do you feel like... Uh, before she even says that, you know, with the fucking tiger claws and shit, what this lady was talking about was basically nice guys. That's, that's literally the whole thing she was just talking about. All the fucking paragraphs of what she said. She was just talking about nice guys. She's thinking about, oh, yeah, it's cool, you know, if he's a nice guy beforehand, and then he introduced me to his parents, and then, you know, he comes around me, and then he knows what he wants, and all this BS and blah, 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 blah. Nice guys. And what do we know about nice guys? I don't even have to say it. But the thing is, it's not the fact that you're nice that is a problem. I don't even like the word nice. I like the word good. Be a good guy. Don't be a nice guy. Be a good guy. But the difference is she wants a guy to invest extremely upfront, get to know her, get to know her family, get to know everything, put himself like all out there, right? And I, I understand to a certain degree, some girls want that level of comfortability. But at the same time, taking the nice approach taking the nice guy approach and doing all these things and not letting your intentions be known to a certain degree and like putting it out there that even though you're 
you're building that comfort that you're actually attracted to this woman and you're testing the waters to see if she's attracted to you back, you're going to be losing. You have to let that frame come up front. Let her know what the deal is before you go in thinking, oh, I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be nice. And then maybe she'll give me some pussy. Come on, dog. Like you got to you got to be real with yourself. Real with yourself. That's the whole principle. You got to be real with yourself before so you can't be manipulated by women that will want you to be nice guys. And then you don't get the woman. And it sounds crazy. It's it may sound a little bit aggressive or crazy how I'm saying it, but at the end of the day, you got to let your intentions be known. Even if you want to get to know her, get to build comfort, whatever, your intentions have to be known. Like, as a friend, that's also his job to be a friend. All, all these things he mm. described, you're being a friend. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's your job to be a friend, too. If we're friends... Your job is to listen to me, to hold me down. Was that for me or for all of you? No, for, for, I'm saying, oh. I'm asking you, but I'm saying, do you feel like, as a friend, that's his job? Can he make it seem like what he doing, like, it's almost like he got to get paid for it? No. Your job is to be a friend. He's not. He's not. I don't think he wants to... I'm thinking the way you are, Oliver. I think it'd be like, oh, I did this, I did that. Your job, if I'm, I'm in the friend, okay, we're both women, my job is to make sure she's good. I listen to her. So if I'm going to be a friend to a I man... I see where you're going with this. You, okay. It's almost like, if you're my if you're you're my trying to say if you're friend... A friend? Yeah, why can't, why, a friend. Why, yeah, like, be a friend. Okay, fine. Don't be. I, I'm. I'm annoyed. It's like your undercover friend. Yeah, is I'm what you're annoying saying. because I okay, feel like I see you're what expecting you're something out of this friendship. Okay. You're not really, at this point, I don't really think you're doing it for real. I don't really okay. feel like you're being general with the shit. I see. Okay, if that's you're just valid. doing it just like that, let's just say you're really being a friend to me. Mm -hmm. And. Yo, yo, like Shorty's about to cut this man's throat with her fucking nails, dog. What the fuck? Yo, side note, side note. I don't trust. I don't trust women with this type of haircut. <laughs> I don't trust women with this type of haircut. And I don't trust women with the other type, the blonde, the blonde, short, wavy haircut. I don't trust them. I don't, you can, you can, you can tell me anything you want to tell me, but I do not trust shorties with those haircuts. Red flag, red flag on the play. Shit really did happen. Yo, and you wasn't really doing it for no purpose. Then that's fire. But if you're doing it with a purpose, like you know, I'ma do this for her. I'ma do that. I'ma listen to this. That on third. I did Yo, all right, all right. This is this is this is this is gonna tie back into. But I'm, I just I just really needed to point out these red flags. First of all, all right. I said I don't trust shorties with this haircut, but it's the haircut, giant hoop earrings, tiger claw combo, with the fucking aggression. That is the fucking ultimate red flag. The ultimate sign of red flags. This whole combo right here is uh, is dangerous, dog. It's it's dangerous. You gotta you gotta be on your guard right now. She might she might literally assault this man right here for for no apparent reason. So just be careful. <laughs> this for you're not being a friend. You're not even being genuine. So fuck all that. Okay, yo, you. she keeps oh, hitting oh, that dog like. like, like I agree with yo, you. If I am doing that, but for what I was speaking on, no, I'm not doing that to be a, a snake in the grass. No, yeah, that's what I'm saying. so I'm not for that reason. I agree with you 100. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't doing that for a reason. But I'm gonna let Rico go. Okay, no, that's, that's all I want to say. Go ahead, Rico. Right, so I'm to gonna go. say this right because I'm more like the five month guy versus the five year guy. Right? What and being that I'm the five-month guy, not the five-year guy, more often than not, I'm the one that's going to do you filthy. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that's going to leave you back to cry to that five-year guy. And then the craziest thing is to me is that y'all then look at the five-year guy as, as if he isn't of value for a chance. Like here's what I'm trying to here's what I'm gonna say, right? Yep, yep. Most successful or most happy marriages, I usually hear a similar term in every one of them. And that's that's my love, that's my best friend. You understand? So like that guy who's been your friend for five, six, seven years while you giving scumbags a shot at you and you haven't given a guy who's taking the time to know you to me is crazy. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, he's gonna treat you more delicately more t nine times out of 10 than a five month guy. You're talking about the type of friend that 
that uh, Danny was talking about, the one with an ulterior motive, yeah. the one that wants to just be your friend, so then that way he can fuck you. We're not talking about that. We're talking about a person who is genuinely your friend, not because, yeah, you know he's a dirtbag and all of that, but you know how he would treat you. That's not what we're saying. Those are most likely the friend that has an ulterior motive, but a person who's just a good-hearted individual, a person who treats you right, a person who's there whenever you need them, Physically, financially, emotionally, he's supporting you. A person that you bring to your parents, he's like, nah, we're not having sex. We're, that's just my friend. But your parents love him. That's that person. <laughs> so, like, what I'm saying is most women, and, you know, I've heard this all my life because I had a friend that was that guy. He used to piss me off with this shit. I like this girl so much. She complains there's no, guy, no nice guys in the world, and I ran in front of her face. That's the typical nice guy phrase. Typical nice guy saying. Oh man, she's like, oh, I wish, I wish I had a guy like you. I wish I could find some guy like you. Bitch, I am a guy like me. That's the problem. That's the problem. These nice guys wish they were in that spot, but they all, they always play the background and they always play the, the, the side character. If you're going to be a girl's main dude, you have to be the main character. You can't be the side character. Because while she's getting dogged out by, like he said, while she's getting dogged out by scumbags, you're there. You're going to be picking up the pieces. You're going to buy every single sexcapade that she's been on. And you're going to be torturing yourself. Years and years and years of torture. Breaking your heart piece by piece by piece. And this happens a lot. This happens a lot. After, after all those, all those scumbags, right? Have been digging her guts like they're searching for fucking diamonds. You're going to be there to plug, fill that hole back in. Shovel the gravel back in that hole and build that girl back up when she's ready at the end of her whole lifespan. Dog. This is all about having respect for yourself. And this is what I said earlier. Put your intentions up front. She either with it or she's not with it. But don't torture yourself. Don't. Sit there and inflict pain on yourself because you're expecting her to just miraculously notice you. This is the problem why nice guys get left behind. And a lot of it, a lot of the times, it's because of their own doing. Don't, don't expect the girl to just magically notice you. They're noticing the guy that grabs the attention. They're noticing the guy that makes her feel emotion. If you're the nice guy, you know, wishing she was the, the fucking one that would just notice and be like, oh my God, he's my prince charming. She's not. Some girls will. And I, this is, those are the exceptions. But generally, don't expect that. And I used to be like, well, damn, it's really crazy how women be blinded by aggressiveness, assertiveness, and a, and a crazy pursuit, but they don't value the work ethic of a person who's actually applying the necessary qualities of a husband. You understand? To, I mean, to be a husband, you have to be a friend. Yeah, you're right. So Oliver's applying a lot of physical traits or, or physical and emotional traits and, and qualities, and it's just being ignored for a it's guy not being ignored it's That's not being what a woman do though women go for the one guy every day how many times you is that all women or yes, you... most women before they get to the good guy they don't fuck a few whack ass dude that don't deserve the pussy a lot of women fuck a lot of dudes that don't even deserve the, the dude that gonna help you fix your credit the dude that gonna make sure you you good the dude that gonna hit you in the hospital if you get hit that's not the dude we want to fuck we want to fuck the dude that's not gonna call us back that's gonna hit us every three other days I, i've been that girl so i just wanted to close out my argument from, with right from her own mouth Aaron said about it depends on who the person is who you are as a person what you would like in a man as far as courting because you can appreciate someone like oliver that takes uh the time to get to know you your family uh, your interests be your friend or whatever or you can more appreciate the guy that comes in and gets you in five months and you know with the assertive 
I, you know, I want to date you. I, I want to, you know, be in a relationship with you. What I did want to say to Oliver, you did say that you were put in the friend zone. And when you're orbiting for five years, that's not you being put in the friend zone. You placed yourself in the friend zone because Facts. you did not go to that woman and say, like, I like you and I would potentially like to be in a relationship with you. Facts. She has no idea. Unless she did and felt like we're too much of a friend, that's when you're put in the friend zone. So there, there's a difference there. And I did also want to say to Rico, She's I know dropping you went bars right on now. She's about, bars. you know, how the five-year guy is, you know, usually the best option. But did we ever really stop to think about if five years is too long, if that guy got too deep into being your friend where there's just like no return? You're like definitely not thinking about him in that way because it's just been too long time has just time has passed you've you've already figured out what you want in a guy and you realize this is just your friend and he cannot be the guy that you need I, i'm gonna just say like this right amanda said that for example is it possible you could have gone too far in the friend zone and now you can't get out to me that means that the woman is blind because if a guy has been showing and showing and proving for five years and you can't see that, then you don't really deserve a person. Showing and proving that he's not attracted to you. No, yeah, like, sometimes like, we gotta like, do it that too. That, and go. Like I don't understand why you're taking away friend versus relationship. When in a relationship you have to be a friend. The main the main ingredients outside of sex in a relationship is a fucking friend. It's a person who listens to you. Why is you a, mad, Because, bro, y'all not making sense. It's a person who listens to you, a person who cares about you, a person who's with you all around the board. He's your friend, but you're calling this person a friend. And the only thing that's separating a friend versus a relationship for y'all and y'all argument is sex. So what was, no, the, what was uh, wrong why with y'all not chemistry? Else? Why y'all don't got no oh, chemistry? Oh, so, so, yeah, uh, what was wrong with everything else? All right, so said? the last thing that you said is that you're not searching for him, and that's just not somebody that you're there for, right? Or, or some that's just somebody that you're not interested in at all right that's cool and my problem with that is it's like and and i feel like i'm repeating the same thing as the last mm -hmm. time why would you befriend somebody that you know is attracted to you even though you're not attracted to him or you find out. Yeah, yeah, but all right so i was waiting i was waiting for somebody to bring that point up we needed that that point to be brought up because here's the thing we got to understand, as much as, like, nice guys do it to themselves, some girls know that, yeah, this guy is attracted to me, he likes me, and he's just, you know, she's not attracted back. But what she will do is use this guy for attention, use this guy as the pillow to cry on, and use this guy for all the resources that he provides as a guy. And she knows that this guy wants her this guy would love would love to have a chance with her but she's like all right cool you know i'm gonna just play this game i'm gonna drag it out i'm gonna just let him keep doing what he's doing keep keep being my little pillow to cry on after i go be with that guy and that guy and that guy i come back to this guy and he's always there I can just tell him all my sad stories. We can go get iced coffees together. We can go out. He's going to pay for the meals. He's going to take care of me. If anything happens, he's going to protect me. But I know he wants to fuck. <laughs> but I'm not going to let him fuck. <laughs> Cute, evil laugh. Some girls are well aware of that. And some girls are well aware of what they're doing. So these are situations that do happen. And it's a it's a it's a manipulation. It's this is what you would call codependent. This is codependence, right? But this is also mutual manipulation. Mutual manipulation. The nice guy is trying to manipulate the girl with nice gestures and perfect perfect with perfect behavior and being super kind but deep down he wants to fuck and she knows this guy wants to fuck but deep down she's like yes i get i get all the attention 
oh, he's just my little buddy. He's my friend. He's going to take me out for coffee. He's going to take me out and handle all my problems. He's going to come fix my fridge and put up my shelves and come do all these things that I need him to do. And you're both manipulating yourselves and each other. This is this is the craziness that goes on. But here's the thing. You're stringing that person along. And you're stringing that person along, and I personally feel, going back to kind of what we spoke about before, my personal opinion is that women string guys in a friend zone along as a bailout option or the emergency dick plan. So it's like, okay, cool. I ran out of all my options. I had five or ten fuck boys come in and couldn't get the job done. But I got Oliver here now that I'm 37, 38. Mr. Afterthought. I got 37, yeah. I'm 37, 38, 40 years old, and I got Oliver I can fall back on, and I know he's going to be there for me because he's been here the whole time. Yep. Okay, so I think the difference between what Rico is explaining and we're explaining is that guys who are you know, feeling that they're stuck in the friend zone, don't express their feelings towards the, the girl that they want to possibly pursue. We are trying to say that, you know, if that's your goal, express your feelings. Don't wait five years just being a friend, thinking that you're going, you know, to get the spot that you want to get. Because someone's going to come in, they're going, you know, to tell you what they want. They're going to be assertive about it. And... I feel like eight times out of 10, that's who the female is gonna go with. So I really, I really think that it depends on who you are as a person, what you prefer in your courting experience. It could go either way. It could be the five-year guy that, you know, takes the time to get to know you as a friend, meet your parents, you know, go through a lot of things with you, listen to you. The backup plan. Or it could be the five-month guy that comes in and, you know, does a lot in your courting experience, take take you on dates, you know, let you know that they're serious and be in a relationship. It could go either way. Thank you guys for watching Eight at the Table. Hopefully So basically, this whole friend zone, guy friend, and all this stuff, like, trust me. This is just double manipulation on both parties. If you're a guy in the friend zone, to really get out of the friend zone, and this is the, I saved the best tip for last. This is the key to get out of the friend zone. You have to be willing to lose. You have to be willing to realize that you have to put your intentions out there, express your intentions. Usually, it's better to do it from the beginning, but if you don't and you're in the friend zone at this point, you have to do it. You have to be willing to take the L. Now, once you put it out there, she's going to have to decide, am I going to accept this guy as a potential partner, you know, fuck buddy, someone in a relationship, whatever you may want, or lose this guy? You have to be willing to walk away. And that's the key. Most nice guys are not willing to walk away. And if you're not willing to walk away, she has all the leverage and all the power to control you. And you're going to be sick throwing up every single night when she comes home and tells you all the stories. And you're just going to be crying in your pillow. Trust me, you have to be willing to take the L and put it out. So, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, drop your thoughts, and honestly, drop your, your nice guy experiences down below. Because I've had those myself, and they're not fun. But drop your nice guy thoughts down below, and remember to stay official. Peace.